So Bitcoin and the entire crypto market pumped, and we're going to go over the entire market as a whole. We're going to go over Bitcoin. We're going to go over the relation between Ethereum and Bitcoin. We're going to go over Bitcoin dominance, and we're going to go over when an altcoin season may come. But before we do that, you know when you go to Wings and they give you like carrots or whatever, or you go to Sushi and they give you the ginger in between so that you can clean your palate, right? You can have a clean slate and, and experience the flavors. That's what we're going to do today, okay? We're not going to be perma bears. We're not going to be perma bulls. We're going to look at everything, all the analysis in a very objective manner. I'm going to give a bullish scenario and I'm going to give a bearish scenario. I'm going to ask you to write in the comments which scenario you think is more likely to play out. But most importantly, we're going to eat the damn ginger, okay? Because look, a lot of people are very emotional when it comes to anything in crypto or anything really investing, period. And um, I think it's very important to be as objective as possible. And so that's what we're going to do here. And we're going to dive right in. I'm going to give the bearish scenario first because I think that you need to understand the bearish scenario in order to understand the bullish scenario. So um, let's get right into it. So Bitcoin. Okay, we had kind of a pump, right? For those who do not, not remember, for those who remember... Uh, I was saying last week that we have a range within a range, okay? And to be honest with you, still nothing has changed, right? We have this range up here. Let me do it actually with a different color. It might be a little bit better. So we have this blue range up here. And once we touch this point here, I was saying that I may be potentially looking at things a little bit more bearishly. Not bear. Not saying that I was bearish. I was long on this pump, by the way. But saying that... I'm going to approach the market in a different perspective, understanding that this is more of the range that I'm going to take into consideration now, as opposed to just this guy up here, and that price could uh, come and fill the lows of the range, right? Now, I want to start building the bias here with structure, okay? We're going to start on the daily time frame, and I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible so that everybody, especially the ones that haven't taken my boot camp, know and, and, and really know what's going on, Okay. First things first, we're going to talk about your daily structure. Now, this is your daily structure as of right now, objectively. We have low, we have high, we have higher low, we have higher high, which means that price is allowed to come all the way down to $50,000 while still remaining bullish, right? And I know that it did hit that point. We're going to come back to that in just a second, okay? But this is your; these are your daily points, which is why I have them marked out. Daily high is up at the all-time high. Daily low was marked at $50.2,000. Cool. Now, the thing about trading is sometimes trading is subjective, okay? You could opt to look at your daily structure like this, high, low, high. Or, in my opinion, you could look to, to, to do your daily structure just straight up. And the reason why we may not want to consider this is because this is very range-based um, structure, and it and it looks it doesn't look like a clean high and low, right? It doesn't look like a clean high, higher low, higher high situation in this. It looks more like it could be a range. You could count it, and you could also not count it, right? Like it could be either or. So again, we're gonna build the case, and it's all gonna make sense in the end here. So for now, let's talk about the case where this actually is our higher low on the daily time frame. So right now, your daily structure is high, low, and then higher high, okay? When you have an SFP of that significant level, which I have indicated here, right? I wrote D low and I put an X, that X indicating an SFP. When you have an SFP of structure, you automatically will target the other end of that structure, right? Which in this case is up here. So because your structure is high, low, high, and then low SFP, you still count it as a structure point. So this now technically is the new daily low. However, the target for that daily low is that high, okay? And this is the bullish case, right? This is if price is going to continue higher, right? Geo, I thought you just said we're going to talk about the bearish case. Well, that's because this point is not necessarily, like, we don't know if this is the case right now. Like I said, trading is subjective. For me, it's very 50-50. I'm not convinced quite yet that this SFP equates to coming up to here. Now, there's no doubt that we have a lot of liquidity up here, and we'll get to that, but let's talk more on if this is not the case. Let's pretend that your structure is this, your daily structure is this. It's literally just this, which means everything is internal, okay? 
first of all, your daily and your weekly structure is the exact same if we look at it not looking at this as your daily structure, right? So weekly, on the, regardless, even if your daily is, is this, your weekly low is all the way down at $38,000, which means price is allowed to come all the way down to $38,000 if it wants to while still remaining bullish on the on the weekly time frame. That's important, okay? But I think we're going to have our answer as to whether or not this is going to be counted as our daily structure. I think we're going to have our answer here within the next couple of weeks. And the reason I think that is because when we jump down to our 4-hour time frame, okay? Um things we might we might get a clue somewhat soon. Remember what I said? If you get an SFP, your target becomes the other end of that structure point, which is this all-time high. And that is simple, just expectational order flow based on structure, right? Now, it goes the same on all time frames. And as you can see, if I were to jump down to my four-hour time frame here and delete this highlighter, you can see that the four-hour high is all the way up here, okay? That is why I am not at all surprised that we had this pump. People seem to think I'm a perma bear, whatever. But... I know my structure points and I know what price is allowed to do while still remaining bullish or bearish within the confinements of that time frame. Okay. So I knew back when, back in the beginning of this month, when Bitcoin came down to 49,000, I knew that price is allowed to come all the way back up to 65,000 while still remaining bearish on the four hour time frame. Okay. And if I draw it out nicely, it looks like this, right? And you know, when you're in a trending market, as they say, the trend is your friend. So your expectational order flow right now, or what you expect the market to do if structure is going to be respected, your expectational order flow right now on the four hour time frame is to make a lower high to then make a lower low. Okay. The reason I believe in the next couple of weeks, we're going to find out whether or not this is going to happen is because we're so close to this high. And we are in, yet again, a couple very important short zones. So if Bitcoin were to SFP $65.6 thousand on the four-hour time frame while coincidentally hitting this four-hour order block that has inducement, giving you that four-hour SFP. And by the way, there is a lot more confluence than just here. You have your entire range point of control. I didn't draw the whole range, but your entire range point of control, you have it up here. You have your down volume point of control. You have a naked daily point of control. You have a naked weekly point of control. You got the four-hour level. So you have a lot to get over here, okay? Bitcoin has a lot to prove between 66 and let's just say 67. We'll give it a little bit more room, like 67.5. Between 66 and 67.5, Bitcoin has a lot to prove, okay? And like I said, I think in the next couple of weeks or so, we're gonna have our answer. Because remember, as of right now, if the four hour structure is going to be respected, then our expectation is to make a lower high to then make a lower low. And this could have been your lower high, right? This could have been. I'm not saying it is, but it absolutely could have been. And if you look at those ranges that I drew out, right, at the beginning, we didn't really break out that much out of this range. Um, yeah, you broke, but you broke and then you already started consolidating as opposed to having a clean break that you would want to see for for a true breakout okay now we're going to talk about this breakout later when we talk about ethereum because remember we know bitcoin and eth work in tandem so we're going to talk about that but i just wanted to make that note for later um and then yeah so if your four hour structure ends up remaining intact then you know you can expect a lower low how why else could we potentially expect a lower low well on the four hour time frame or really any time frame for that matter you can also see that you have a lot of liquidity being built up beneath us. Now, don't get me wrong. We did have liquidity towards the upside, and we do have liquidity towards the macro range high. We do. But I can't help but notice how similar all of these moves look. Look what happens when you build up liquidity and do not properly accumulate, okay? You end up coming back for that liquidity. And while everybody and their mother is always aggressively bullish, and might I say, aggressively emotional 
when it comes to the markets, they don't really know what's going on and they just want up only and then they get mad when this happens and they get mad at me when I say there's going to be a minus $10,000 candle and we haven't properly accumulated. They come and attack me. The pencil necks come and attack me instead of just being objective and taking advantage of these moves and, and eating the ginger, cleaning their palate. You know, this looks to me once again like if structure were to flip, things will not look good. And, and it looks a lot more likely like that this is not going to be your daily low in the event that the four hour decides to hold and run it lower. How are we going to know if it's going to do that? We're going to jump down to the one hour time frame now. Okay. For, by the way, for those who don't know, I mainly trade in the direction of the four hour. So four hour is still bearish right now. I cannot flip bullish until the four hour flips bullish, which is going to be, we're going to be talking about that in just a second here. How do we know if this four hour high, right? Because your four hour high right now is at 65, whatever. How do we know between 66 and 67.5? How do we know that's going to hold? Well, you can take a look at the one hour time frame, right? And when, if the one hour time frame flips bearish, I'll tell you this. If the one hour time frame flips bearish the same time the four hour SFPs, guys, we're coming for this liquidity. Okay, we're coming for it. It doesn't matter about the ETFs. It doesn't matter about the inflows. It doesn't matter about the supply and whatever. No, we're coming. We're very likely to come for that. Should this, what I'm about to say, happen? Okay. So your one hour time frame structure is as follows. Some point along the way, we don't need to count all that. You have low, you have high, you have low, you have high, you have low, you have high. Okay. Like this. This is your current structure. And then, of course, we started to consolidate. What happens when you consolidate? Why do why does price even consolidate? Well, it consolidates because um, it's it's market makers effectively getting their positions right. They're either distributing or they're reaccumulating at this point, right? That's why we range, not so that the RSIs can reset or any other stupid shit you hear on the internet. It is simply them obtaining contracts, right? They're building liquidity on both sides and they're likely going to run both sides. That's typically how ranges work, and then the the true move comes into fruition, right? Currently, your one hour low is all the way down at $59,000. Now, that doesn't really serve us any good because that's so far away. You would have to break down 15 minute structure, and I'm not going to go that in depth in this video. But here's what I'm going to say you have this short zone and this potential SFP zone that everybody needs to mark on their charts and everybody needs to watch, which we've already said 66, let's say 65.5, between 67.5. We need to watch this. This is a short zone. In the event that your one hour time frame does something like this, where it either hits that level, comes back SFP, SFPs, breaks that low, gives you that retrace, and then down you go, we're coming for those lows. And alternatively, in the event that your one hour time frame does something like this, where you get higher low, higher low, higher low, but this is an SFP, this is an SFP, and then more macroly, you hit that four hour SFP on the four hour time frame then you are definitely coming down for some of these lows. Does that mean that we're automatically going to target this low at 49,000? Absolutely not. Nothing is ever definitive and it is very important to watch structure. And that's why nothing will tell you what the market is going to do faster than structure. Not me, nobody else. Structure is going to clearly give you your answer, but you just need to understand how structure is, how it moves, why do we watch it, how to interpret it, how to analyze it, etc. So if your one hour time frame gives you an SFP like this, and, and this would be, by the way, a one hour uh, distribution. If something like this happens, and then you do get that, uh, let me actually draw this out here so we can visualize it nicely. You have a nice SFP candle right here and ends up SFPing on the four hour time frame, then you're just gonna come lower, okay? It's as, it's as simple as that. You're just going to come lower. That's the bearish case scenario. You need to watch for that. Okay, and I think, like I said, we're going to know that within the next couple of days here. Now, we don't have to touch this four-hour high because, remember, your expectational order flow on the four-hour time frame is lower high to make a lower low. You don't have to SFP it. If you SFP it, it actually is more bearish if you SFP it. This becomes your target by default, whereas technically, I mean, that would still be your default target if you don't SFP it, but it's a little bit better if you get that liquidity grab. And I just want to add as well, above this box, you have, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, semi-equal highs here. So if you're looking for a short zone, which this is a short zone, I would actually probably extend the, I'm not, I'm not a swing trader, I'm a scalper, but I would extend the short zone up a little bit to accommodate for this liquidity that they may come and take. Okay. So I just wanted to say that that's your bearish scenario. Now, the bullish scenario on Bitcoin is obviously your four-hour structure flips, okay? 
I've been talking about the lack of accumulation at the lows. What I like to see is something like what happened in August of last year, which is we had our big dump, we consolidated, and then only on Bybit we didn't come back. But if you come to the Coinbase chart, if I come to Coinbase real quick, um, I did, I don't know if I drew it out yesterday, but if you come to Coinbase, where are we? August of last year, August of last year, you can see we had our big dump and then we actually came back and swept that low again. So we actually accumulated down at this low, which is not something that this bull market Bitcoin has loved to do. And that's why this bull market is taking a lot of people off guard. And they're like, oh, Bitcoin's not doing anything. And the answer is quite simple. It's just because we're not accumulating. And people think that we are accumulating. And it's just not a fact. Until this low is touched, we're not accumulating on a macro scale. Now, we are kind of, which we'll get to in a second, because now we're building the bullish case. But, you know, this, I wanted to, I want to see this low run again. If I see this low taken again, and then we get a structure flip on like the daily time frame. Then we're going to go giga bull mode. But until that happens, until I see a nice accumulation, all I can help but to see is liquidity. Look at what happens every time liquidity is being built up and they don't come and accumulate. They end up running it back down and then we end up still having our range. Now we're going to talk about this macro range here when we talk about altcoins. So make sure you're still watching. Okay. All right. So the bullish case scenario is the four hour high gets taken, okay? The four hour high gets taken and you break with conviction above, okay? I wanna see a clean break, perhaps even taking like, I mean, let's say 69, but whatever the case is. If you start breaking above, let's say this box actually, 67.5, like I said, maybe 68K, you start getting up there, then what we know based on structure is first of all, your structure broke, so you have a bullish scenario. Now, your structure points on the four hour would be high, low, high, low, higher high. So this would be a break of structure. And then your expectational order flow is higher low for then higher high, okay? Now, there's two things you need to know. Number one, you don't actually need to get this pullback. This could just take you straight to the all-time high, which I think would be more bearish long-term if it does that. Because once again, a lot of liquidity would be left behind. Now, we're not going to talk about all-time high, like what happens after all-time high, because that will be later. This video is already long. Um, but, uh, you know, let's just assume, for example, that Bitcoin does not go to the all-time high right away. Your expectational order flow on the four-hour time frame in that regard is to make a higher low to then make a higher high. And what did I say about all of this liquidity? So this will take a lot of people off guard as well, even if it means that the low is in, which the low might be in, I don't know. But, and, and I think I'll know here in the next couple of weeks, like I said. But if you get a clean break above, on the, you start closing four hour daily candles above this line here at 65.6 and closing with conviction, again, let's say 67.5, 68K, then we can expect, and, and we're lucky enough to get a pullback, we can expect a higher low to then make a higher high. Where can that higher low come in? Well, we do have a bunch of order blocks down at these lows. We obviously have this liquidity that we can come and sweep. And I suspect that if we start losing this zone over here, this zone around, uh, let's say 62.2 and 60.2, that $2,000, I suspect if you start to lose this, you're definitely gonna come back to this low because like I said, easy liquidity. And then perhaps we will finally come and hit some of the order blocks that we were watching down at the low. I'm not gonna get too technical with it. We had like a blue box there that we could potentially long. And remember, your expectational order flow on the four hour time frame, which is generally the direction that I'm trading in, is to make a higher low to then make a higher high. So that's the bullish case scenario. But Gio, you said, you know, uh, we haven't been accumulating. Why Why wouldn't we stop now? Well, I'll or why would we stop now? Why, why is it okay to go up now if you didn't properly accumulate? Two answers to that question. Number one, within this range here, the one that I was counting as the smaller range, and I was saying, oh, I think like, you know, we can't be irresponsible to say that it could come back down here. Uh, look, objectively speaking, you have your top one, you have your top two, and then you could have your top three. The follow through post top three wasn't great, but here we are now, and uh, it is what it is. This is an accumulation, not the cleanest looking model I've ever seen, but that could have been your accumulation. However, that's a smaller range accumulation, and that accumulation could have just been the accumulation. How many times can I say accumulation in one 30 second time frame? Um, just to hit this order block and then come back down. But I'm not going to sit here and say that that's not an accumulation because it absolutely is, okay? The next bullish scenario, sorry, I know I'm flip-flopping flip many times, but 
is potentially, and I, this is not my favorite scenario, by the way, or my favorite like kind, kind type of analysis. It doesn't look that good, but to say that this was your top one, this is your top two, this is your top three, and then up you go. You could argue that. That's arguable. I'm not going to sit here and say that that's not the case because remember, we had the ginger and we're going to be as objective as possible. But, um, you know, we definitely had, we, like, this would this could have been your top one. That's Yeah, that could have been your top one, top two, top three, top four. And typically when you have top four tops, it's not the best looking, but also I can't ignore the idea that this is one, this is two, and this is three. So this could be a macro accumulation or reaccumulation rather because we are in an uptrend. To send price higher, right? It could be. And, um, you know, we're, we're considering that. I'm not really looking at that because even if this is going to be your one, two, and three top, remember, this top is ignored, which is kind of weird if you're going to do it that way. That seems like you're trying to not eat the ginger, you know? It seems like you're trying to be a little bit too bullish when you, uh, when you do it this way. But on top of that, even more locally speaking, right? Like on the macro, this could be an accumulation. But why don't we have an accumulation at, like locally? It just seems weird that on such a big time frame, right? We're, we've been in this in this range for six months. It seems strange that after this four tap, which is kind of weird, you wouldn't at least locally get some kind of accumulation. Okay, so that's the macro of it, right? We built a bearish case, we built a bullish case, and like I said, I think in the next couple of weeks we're gonna know very much so which way this thing is going to go. I think it's either going to, if it's going to be bearish, I think it's either going to turn here and go down, or I think it's going to come up, pop its head above 65, let's between 67, whatever the numbers I said were, and then SFP that four hour high, and then go back down. Where the target for the down is will solely determine, or solely depend on what structure decides to do. So for that, we don't know yet. However, Bitcoin and Ethereum work in Tandem. Oh, by the way, one thing I forgot to mention, if this does be a four hour SFP and we come for this low, keep in mind, remember, I don't think that this is your daily structure anymore. I think the daily low is truly down here, which means price is allowed to come all the way down to 38K while still remaining bullish on the daily and the weekly time frame. So at that point, I would be expecting somewhere around $43,000. I think $43,000 is going to be the ultimate fake out. One more fake out to the downside. And then you get a nice daily structure flip, nice accumulation at the low. Bitcoin goes down and stays down. And then, uh, and then we actually have our true bull market, okay? Or continued bull market. A lot of people on the internet are saying, oh man, where's our bull market? Where's our bull market? And I'm like, guys, they gave you $74,000. We've been in a bull market for two years. Like, what are you talking about? People are too emotional. People ain't eating the ginger, if you know what I'm saying. All right, now, hold on. Let me just, I'm not even gonna edit this out. I gotta really scratch my nose here. Okay, <clears throat> if I was off camera, I would pick my nose, but I can't do that right now. So, Ethereum. Bitcoin and Ethereum work in tandem. This we know, okay? This we know. Now, I'm not going to get super, super technical with Ethereum because we don't need to. But here's what I'm going to say. Ethereum's range, right? Remember, you always need to know, oh man, these freaking drawings... You always need to know what Bitcoin and Ethereum are doing in relation to one another because Bitcoin and Ethereum work in tandem. I say that all the time. I've said it all the time, and I'm not going to change my tune now. It works all the time, okay? So remember when we talked about that breakout on Bitcoin? I'm back on Bitcoin now, by the way. Remember when we talked about that breakout on Bitcoin and how we broke out and we're kind of just already consolidating? Why are we already consolidating instead of getting a big move out? Well, Ethereum's range relative to Bitcoin is this guy here right? Ethereum's is this guy right here. Now, Ethereum is potentially giving us a different story because Ethereum, not only is it also not breaking out like Bitcoin, but it hasn't even, like, it's it's still within the range, right? Bitcoin at least broke the range shitty, shittily, like in a, in, in, in a not clear and strong way. By the way, let me just add one more thing. Volume is on the decline. I forgot to mention that. Volume is clearly declining on Bitcoin. So again, the ginger. But anyways, volume is declining, so that's another thing for the bearish points. Anyway, um, Ethereum is showing potentially a different story, right? Ethereum did not even break out of the range, not even close, and is already struggling and is already ranging, so it doesn't look good. Not only that, but Ethereum is starting to show signs of a distribution above the range that you're in right now, which is also not the most bullish thing, okay? If this ends up being your range, right, which is, it is a range, right? We'll, we'll make this, I don't know, gray. Gray is your range. 
your red, or actually, let's make this a different color as well. We'll make it uh, la, 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 blue. Your blue could be your manipulation, right? Which is your manipulation of retail um, positions. And you're already starting to see signs of distribution up here based on the structure. I'm not going to go too into it. Like it, this video is already 25 minutes long and I have so much to talk about still. But you have your range. You have your manipulation potentially above your range, inducing traders into thinking, oh, Bitcoin or Ethereum is holding support. We're going higher. We're going higher. We're going to a million K. And then potentially you have a red expansion at hand, which would be the target would be the low of the range. And um, yeah. And remember, Bitcoin and Ethereum work in tandem. Look at this liquidity, guys. Like this objectively, let's be objective. Let's, you know, have the ginger. I'm going to keep saying that. This looks like shit. Okay. This looks like it could easily get run. Now, Ethereum is the king of not taking any liquidity ever for the record. I'll make this a straight line. It's a little bit cleaner. Ethereum is the king of not accumulating. So I'm not going to sit here and bank my whole money on this idea, but this is something that we need to watch out for. And we need to understand that, remember, in my opinion anyways, um, for Bitcoin purposes, this was my larger range, right? Like relative to Bitcoin. And relative to Bitcoin, when it's failing to break out here, your four-hour high is still lower high, lower low. And you have all this space that you could come back to. I'm not going to discount the idea that obviously Ethereum can come back to all of this space as well. And Ethereum and Bitcoin, are, are, are Ethereum is showing us a little bit more sign of, uh, of that happening. Now, one thing I want to add in relation to that is this price action that happened here. You guys remember, prior to the $10,000 move, I was the only one on the internet. I swear on my life, I was the only one. Go look at it, or that I've seen anyways. Everybody and their mother was aggressively bullish, saying Market Cipher was looking this, this was looking this, we're getting bull devs here. And I'm like, guys, I don't care. And this is word for word. I even said, I'm like, I don't care if Bitcoin is $10 away from the all-time high. I think that we're more likely to touch the low than touch the high of the range. At the low at that time was $56,000. Was it only $56,000? No. Yeah, it was. It was. Only fifty six. dollars No, no, down here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 53k i was saying you know we're touching 53 i've even been saying on twitter 47 makes more sense before 74 now he didn't hit 47 but i still don't think that we got to discount that remember we talked about 43 anyways listen here's what i wanted to talk about everybody and their mother were following the internal daily structure which was fine and the internal daily structure flipped bullish at this point okay the beginning of last month july the 5th or whatever if we come to ethereum and we go to that same point the beginning of last month, this was your internal daily structure on Ethereum. It was down up. This part already happened, so it's irrelevant. But low, high, and then low, and then we started wicking these highs, okay? I was the only one that I know of talking about this. And I know because I say all the time, Bitcoin and Ethereum work in tandem. And I know because I'm the one that scalped this live on YouTube and said the target could potentially literally take you all the way down to 53K. Everybody's like, Geo, you're crazy. Max Payne is like 58K. And I'm like, how is Max Payne 58K? It's still within the range. Max Payne is zero. Do you know what max even means, Mr. Pencil Neck? Anyways, the reason I'm bringing this to your attention is because right now is no different. Remember, Bitcoin broke out of its range, but in a shitty manner, similar to how Bitcoin broke out of this high in a shitty manner and started to show signs of a distribution while Ethereum was lagging behind. Ethereum is lagging behind, was lagging behind here. And that's why I was so confident in my Bitcoin short was because Ethereum didn't break with conviction. It started showing signs of a distribution. And then obviously down we went. It's the exact same scenario right now. Ethereum is not breaking out. Ethereum is potentially giving you a power of three play with liquidity below. Ethereum is showing you like some resistance here while Bitcoin is also at a very pivotal moment, very, very important moment. And similar to how it was back there, my goodness, similar to how it was back here, it's, it's not so different in terms of your overall narrative with the relation between Bitcoin and Ethereum. Okay, so that's something to consider as well. Now, if Bitcoin decides to come up to 65 or 67 or whatever, then I would expect Ethereum to come up a little bit higher and it's allowed to, okay? I have a nice short zone around this area. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pull it up exactly. These are not exact positions. I don't want you to go and zoom into these labels, put a short position and call it a day. That's not how I trade. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm bringing you all the facts 
with a clean palate because we eat the ginger here. We don't perma bull or perma bear. Even those words are emotional as is, okay? We're talking about the potential of the entire crypto space either marking up or marking down, okay? And I want to know which scenario you um, favor, okay? So that's Bitcoin, that's Ethereum, and the relation between Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now we got to talk about uh, dominance, okay? I'm bullish on dominance. I'm bullish on dominance. And I've been publicly bullish on dominance to, obviously, you can see this was already drawn out, till at least 60%. Okay. Now, many people seem to think that altcoin season is coming, and many people seem to think that altcoin season is coming soon. I do not think that it's coming necessarily soon. Uh, I mean, I guess soon is subjective, but I'm bullish on dominance until 60% is hit. Okay. Guys, listen, you might get your Solanas that pump stupid percentages. You might get this, you might get that every so often. Fine, great. But until dominance starts to actually flip bearish and give you this kind of move, it is not altcoin season. Guys, this is not altcoin season. Or sorry, these little dumps here, not altcoin season. This is altcoin season. When can this happen? In my opinion, until minimum Bitcoin hits or uh, Bitcoin dominance hits 60%. So what does that mean? That means that if Bitcoin pumps, I believe Bitcoin is going to pump a lot more than the altcoins and you're already seeing it. Alternatively, that means that if Bitcoin dumps, that means that your alts are typically going to bleed heavily against Bitcoin, which once again, you can see Bitcoin's been going sideways and alts have been getting absolutely destroyed. And you can even see it today right now. OK, there was a point last night where Bitcoin was down half a percent and some of your alts were down four or five percent. Even right now, Bitcoin is zero percent on the day where we are exactly on daily open and Dogecoin is down 2%, Gala is down 2%, uh, ADA is down almost 2%, Tron is up 4%. Look at this, 4%, 5%, 5%. So alts are bleeding and Bitcoin is doing nothing. That's what that means. And in my opinion, dominance will remain bullish until 60%. So you need to really be paying attention to what your alts are doing relative to Bitcoin, like I just did with Ethereum, to understand, um, really get a whole get a get a picture of the market of the crypto market as a whole i stumbled my words there but it's okay you'll get over it okay so understanding this now we got to talk about altcoin season when typically does altcoin season happen well typically altcoin season happens obviously when dominance starts to roll over and starts to get that uh that that bearish kind of bias right like i said i think we're going up to 60 percent, and then i think when you have a daily structure flip after you've hit 60 percent, we could potentially talk about altcoins. But the problem with that is what's going to happen until then? Remember what I said, if Bitcoin pumps, your alts are probably going to pump, but not as much as Bitcoin, in my opinion. Obviously, there's going to be days of it where it's not going to just go straight up. There's going to be days where alts are pumping. I'm not, and that's not what I'm, I'm not saying that, they're, that that's not going to happen. My goodness, my words. What I am saying is that in general, I believe over the next however many months, a couple months, three, four months, five months, six months, dominance is going to make its way continuing um, upwards. I'm bullish on dominance. So if Bitcoin pumps, remember, we, we built two scenarios here. We built a bullish case and we built a bearish case. If Bitcoin pumps, then alts are going to pump as well. If Bitcoin dumps, alts are going to die. I think we're going to know within the next couple of weeks. So which direction do I favor or when do I think altcoin season is? Well, typically what will happen is Bitcoin pumps, which it has over the past two years, and then it ranges sideways. And then that is when your alt season begins. The problem is that right now, currently, Bitcoin has pumped, as we know, and Bitcoin has been going sideways, as we know, yet alts are getting decimated. Why? Why is that happening? Well, the answer to me, anyways, in my opinion, and please let me know in the comments if you agree with it, my answer is we are not destined for an altcoin season yet. And the reason why is because Bitcoin dominance is still, in my opinion, bullish, right? I think that if this range was going to be bullish for altcoins, if we were going to get an altcoin season from this range, we would have already seen it. It's been six months of us doing absolutely nothing on the macro on Bitcoin and altcoins not only have not done anything either in terms of the upside, but they've gotten absolutely destroyed. Okay, so I don't believe that right now is anything different. I don't think altcoin season is, is going to begin until either this low 
or this high is taken. And not just taken, we need a clean break. So when is alt season, you ask? Well, because I am the most advanced technical analyst, providing the most advanced technical analysis known to mankind, I will give you my opinion. There's a bullish scenario and there's a bearish scenario. If Bitcoin, actually there's a bullish scenario and there's two bearish scenarios. If Bitcoin pumps and breaks out, a real breakout, okay, a real breakout, we, we start seeing like 85K and then you start to range up here and dominance hits 60% or higher Say and, it, and dominance flips bearish on the daily time frame, say hello, excuse me, say hello to altcoin season. At that point, I'm not even going to be talking about Bitcoin. I'm not even going to be looking at Bitcoin. I don't care. I'm going to be like up 18 hours a day trading every single altcoin I can because I know the returns that altcoin season gives us, okay? However, remember, we ate the ginger today, okay? So we're not going to marry the idea that it's, it's yet. Yeah, I don't think it's yet. This is your bullish scenario on altcoin season, okay? Dominance, I think either way, if Bitcoin dumps down to 43 or pumps up to, let's say, 85, dominance will rise regardless. That's your bullish scenario. Your bearish scenario is if Bitcoin pumps, takes the all-time high, starts to range, and then falls back within the range, I think that's more bearish than bullish. Because the same thing that I drew on Ethereum, this PO3, potentially power of three, this manipulation event, Bitcoin could be no different. Right. If Bitcoin decides to pump a button, we talked about this from like, I don't even know, five months ago. Bitcoin can take the all time high. And I've even tweeted it. I'm like, I hope Bitcoin takes the all time high because I believe Bitcoin's overextended. I believe that we need to have a proper accumulation. I believe that if we just continue higher without getting that accumulation, that's going to be a lot of liquidity. And I believe the moment you get that daily structure flip, you are coming down, down, down. So that's your first bearish. So first bullish scenario. Bitcoin breaks out with conviction, 85K, starts to range here and does nothing for another two months. Cool. We'll talk about altcoin season. Aside from that, if Bitcoin takes the all-time high and SFPs that all-time high or ranges above the all-time high for three days and then falls back within the range, I don't know. I, don't, I honestly cannot tell you where I foresee um, altcoin season or when I foresee it because at that point, the bull market being intact is, is truly questionable. Remember, we're two years into the bull market right now. So it is very questionable if that happens. And the last bearish or the second bearish scenario is if Bitcoin decides to break down. I actually believe that this will be the most healthy scenario for altcoins. And I'll explain why real quick and then we'll wrap up this video because it's already been way too long. Look, if Bitcoin dominant or remember if, if Bitcoin, I think if Bitcoin pumps or dumps, dominance will continue to rise. If dominance drops or sorry, if Bitcoin dumps, and it hits the 43K level that could potentially be in the bearish scenario. Remember, we ate the ginger. I know you're sick of me saying that, but I need to say it because the pencil necks keep pencil necking. Look, if this happens, your alts are going to die, okay? I've been saying for quite some time that altcoins are going to make new bear market lows, and we've already seen the proof in the pudding with, uh, I believe it was Atom. Atom hit a new bear market low, Okay. And I think that that is not exclusive to just Adam or a couple coins. I think that a lot of them can hit new bear market lows because typically what happens is 2024 relative to previous cycles, not that the cycle is not broken, but relative to previous cycles, 2024 is the year of Bitcoin, 2025 and maybe 26 a little bit is the year of altcoins, okay? Typically. So if this happens, not only will it give Bitcoin a chance to properly accumulate, in my opinion, right? You spend some time down here, some real time down here, spend a month down here, spend two months down here. You go down and you stay down. Not only does it give Bitcoin a chance to properly accumulate, but in my opinion, if this happens without touching the high, it gives Bitcoin the gas, we'll call it the gas money. I don't know why we're going to call it that, but we're going to call it that. Will it will give Bitcoin the gas money necessary to send price up higher if we get a proper accumulation, in my opinion, okay? Remember, we've failed to take this high many, many times because we've also failed to accumulate many, many times, and every time it's led in a dump, right? So if Bitcoin dumps, and then it ranges here, and then it accumulates, and then you get a pump, and then you come to the all-time high, or, and then you come back within this range, then I believe that it will be bullish for alts because I believe at that point, 
dominance will start to drop. Remember, I'm bullish on dominance since till 60%. And I think that that's going to happen either at the all-time high or if they come and like head, head, head towards 43K, for example. Okay? Not only that, but in the event that this scenario plays out, you're going to leave a lot of liquidity above you. And so these are the type of moves where Bitcoin can have a big pop up the way here it had a big pop down because there was a lot of liquidity. You could have a big pop up. None of this up sideways garbage for two months up now sideways for like a week or sorry, two weeks. I meant down here and then up here now a week. And then no, I'm talking you want a true move with a true breakout, something that looks nice. Look at what happened here, for example, right? You had we're on the daily time frame. You had an I mean, not a great accumulation, but you had somewhat of an accumulation down here and then pop and then you never came back. Pop and never came back. Here, even though it was a small little range, you had an accumulation. This was a, a confirmed accumulation. Pop and then never came back. Look at how the smallest accumulation here resulted in such a large move. 50% move to the upside from like a two-week range. Here, you're struggling to do anything, and in my opinion, because you're not accumulating. So if we come back down to 43, you accumulate for a month, two months, three months, I think that that could be the move that can give you that strong pop. And remember, if you SFP this high, it's bearish. The only way it's bullish is if you take the high with conviction and let's just give or take 85K. Okay, give or take. 80 to 85K, I'm okay with. Maybe not 80, maybe 82, 83 to 85. So I want a clean break. I want to know that we're not coming back. Look at how here you broke and we're not coming back. But, you know, uh, like let's go to the Ethereum. Here you... you kind of broke, but you don't know if you're coming back. I don't want this. I want a clean break to know that I'm not coming back. Then I want dominance to, to flip bearish and roll over. And then Bitcoin can go sideways and then say hello to altcoin season. But as, until that happens, I'm not convinced. And I think, like I said, we're going to know here in the, in the next couple of weeks. And you can see, by the way, now how Bitcoin ties in with Ethereum, or rather Ethereum ties in with Bitcoin, and dominance ties in with Bitcoin. And Altcoin season ties in with dominance, which ties in with Bitcoin and what Bitcoin's doing. So you can see how by analyzing just two or three different what we're, what we're going to call tickers, which they are tickers, but I don't know if you call like dominance a ticker. Anyway, if you start analyzing just three or four and you build your narrative on each one and you have them like be siblings, okay, you understand what they're all doing at the same time, you can really build your case for this entire crypto market. And so... Guys, that's where I'm going to leave you because I don't know what's going to happen. Um, but I think in the next couple of weeks, I'll have a very good idea as to what may happen. And it all comes down to this four hour high. It all starts on this four hour high. It all starts on what Ethereum will do relative to that four hour high. If, is Ethereum going to continue to show signs of a distribution? Because it's very unlikely that Ethereum dumps when Bitcoin pumps, right? So that's very unlikely. I think that we got to be open minded. I think we need to continue eating that ginger to, um, you know, get our palates neutral right we're not emotional a lot of people are emotional right now you know i think i bet if i open up the uh the bitcoin fag index i bet you let's actually try that real quick bitcoin fag index let's see what the fag index is at uh people are just emotional you know this this they're actually making me write fear and greed and greed index okay so you know, like, okay, look, 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 look at this. Last month, last week was 31. Now it's 56. You know, last, last month was 68 before the pump. It's all over the place. You know, it, people are so emotional and people get so mad and they marry one idea all the time. And that's just like, not the way to be in my opinion. Anyways, not the way to be not for traders anyway. So you know, we'll see how it is. I, I recommend everybody just keeps eating the ginger. You know, have the carrots in between the wings. Keep your palate neutral as possible, and you won't get wrecked. You won't get emotional. Um, bulls and bears, weird, weird terminology. Mark up and mark down, okay? Mark up and mark down is what we're going to start using on this channel. Guys, that's my market update, you know. I think that uh, the next coming weeks are going to be very interesting. I think that whatever happens, it's going to take a lot of people off guard. I don't think that we should rule out 43. And I don't think we should rule out 74. But the problem that the majority of the crypto market has is they do roll out or, or uh, rule out 43. When 43, as I've indicated in this video, is a very realistic option. Now, guys, if you like the content, please hit the like button. If you loved it, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell. I go live from time to time. I used to go live a lot more, but I'm taking care of my VIP members lately and I'm working on my course. So uh, stay tuned for that. 
But this video was 45 minutes long. I put a lot of time into it and a free way to help support me and it really goes a long way is by hitting the like button. So I really appreciate anybody that decides to do that. And this video, we're gonna try something different, okay? We're not gonna be pencil neckly. We're going to be as objective as possible and let me know in the comments which scenario you think is more likely and why. Are we more likely to mark up and hit all time high? Or are we more likely to mark down and potentially hit 43K? And if we do hit all time high, are we more likely to break out and hit, let's say, 85K? Or are we more likely to SFP and then potentially bull market over? Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you prefer. I open, I'm open. i open to discussions, but the only thing I ask is back up your discussion. I don't want to hear stupid shit like it has to go up or it has to go down. No. What are we going to do? We're going to eat the ginger. Guys, I'll catch you in the next video.